Greetings and salutations and thank you for clicking on the video. Today I'm going to show you how to use MP3 gain to establish a consistent average loudness for all of the songs that are in your MP3 collection. And if you are like me and have been collecting MP3s for a long time, at this point in time you probably have a lot of MP3s that came from a lot of different sources. and there are a lot of schemes out there to try and figure out how to level everything out. Some players have replay gain in them. You can put audio processing in your player that tries to turn the volume up and down from song to song. This, I have found, is absolutely the best way to do this, and I have actually been using this program for more than 10 years. So, I had posted videos recently where I was complaining that this was removed from Ubuntu 1604 but I have found that it is available in a PPA and at the end of the video I will show you all the packages that you need to install it. Most other distributions have these packages in the repositories. You might have to search around a little bit to find them. We'll talk about the exact packages you need later in the video. The first thing that I want to do is introduce you to the software that I have a uh, up on the screen and talk a little bit about what it does. The first one is Asunder, which is a CD ripper that lets you take your CDs and convert the audio therein to various different formats. I have this set up right now to encode MP3 files and at uh, there are 256 kilobits per second. You can create AUGs, you can create FLACs, you can create waves whatever tickles your fancy. I'm using mp3 for reasons that will become apparent shortly. One of the things I wanted to point out about this particular program was if you install it make sure that you go to the advanced menu here. You can leave all this stuff about the uh, FreeDB database alone but make sure that this is unchecked where it says faster ripping and it turns off the error correction because that might cause you heartburn if you're ripping from CDs that are less than perfect you might end up with mp3 files with clicks and pops in them or gaps so that's something you definitely want to turn off uh, speed is nice but accuracy is much better I, I'll wait a while for things to rip as long as I know they're not going to have problems when I play them back okay so that is how the Asunder program works that is in the repositories for pretty much every distribution of Linux and you are going to want to make sure that you have the uh, codecs that it needs in there. You want to also install LAME for MP3s if you intend to use them. Make sure that you have the uh, Vorbis, MP, um, Vorbis codec in there as well and then it will be able to do all the formats that you'd like to do. So we can go ahead and close Asunder now because we're not going to need it for the rest of the video. It's a very nice program and it's easy to set up. The next thing I want to show you here is Ocean Audio, which is an audio editor. And we're going to get to the point of what MP3 Gain does. So I have ripped three files here from various sources. The first one is from a brand new CD by Paul Simon. And this was put out in 2016. The next one that I have here is... Uh, let's see, it's Mark Cohn. That's from a CD that came out about 1990. And the next one that I'm going to show you is Donald Fagan's IGY from an album called The Nightfly. This is actually the oldest CD in my collection. I bought it in 1983. So this is an original pressing of that particular song. And what I want to show you here with Ocean Audio is the difference in the gain of the audio because over the years CDs have gotten louder and louder and louder and louder. So if we go back to 1983 and we click on that, this is what the audio looks like coming off the CD right there. Uh, in those days they were terrified of clipping the audio because with digital audio if you overdrive it you run out of numbers and you get a terrible clip. It sounds pretty bad. So they were very careful about the levels. And then if we come up to about 1990 with the Mark Cone track here, you see it gets a little bit louder. Uh, they had technology at that point that allowed them to push it a little further. They had better metering. 
so when they would actually master a CD they could get a little bit more audio level on it but if we fast forward to today now we have digital limiters and we have all kinds of processing and in the last I'd say 20 years or so the big thing with mastering CDs is to try and make them louder than the next guy's CDs so they have all of these lovely tools now that allow them to cram audio onto discs now the problem here is that if we take these three songs and throw them into our library and then we play this song and then we go to this song it's going to be like a huge difference in sound and there and that's uh, because uh, the difference in peak meters and uh, RMS meters or VU meters a VU meter will show you the average level what the human ear thinks as far as how loud is it it's concerned uh, and a peak meter will just show you peaks so you can have for instance this on a peak meter when it gets to the louder parts of the song probably reads about as loud as this does and this is just because they have raised the averages here so this presents a problem and we need to figure a way around that now many audio players have some sort of way to deal with this they have replay gain which means that you use a program to read the files and then it sets replay gain within uh, the tag on the file and then the player can catch that and it can play it back at a volume that will be consistent with everything else that is how it works with augs so if you're using aug vorbis files they don't have any way to actually change the gain within the file mp3 gain on the other hand actually changes the gain within the file so i'm going to go ahead and close ocean audio and i'm going to open this up here and we're going to drag our files in and you'll see here that we have a target gain set of 89 db now this is an arbitrary number that the person who wrote the software came up with I don't know what it actually relates to but it is the standard that the program works with so I currently have about 30,000 mp3 files that are all set to this gain so I'm not going to change it obviously so we put all our songs in here and then we come over here to analyze let's go to analyze and now it's going to go through and read all of those and it's going to get data from them so that's what you're seeing the program do right now and then it gives us some numbers over here okay there are two ways to analyze you can do track analysis or album analysis and this is important if you are using your CD ripper to rip entire albums and then put them in a folder so you'd have the folder with the album artist and name and then you would have all of the tracks within you can drag all of these in and you can tell it okay I want to find the album gain which means that it will find an average across all the tracks sometimes producers they decide that for artistic reasons that one track should be lower than the next on a record and so therefore you can preserve that if you do track gain then it's going to try and find the gain for each file that you put in there which is what we're doing today since these are not from albums and you see we've got massively different numbers here we got clipping on the Paul Simon track we have no clipping on the uh, track from Mark Cohn there but we have a uh, louder average and then with the Donald Fagan track which goes back to 1982 we have it, it just falls right into place this is our target volume right here so what we need to do is bring all of these to the target volume and to do that you would come over here and then we have this gain button and then the gain button has the same deal here uh, you can uh, do the album gain so we could try and find an average across all these tracks or we could do track gain so track gain is highlighted so let's go ahead and set the gain on these and then I'll show you exactly what it did because we'll open them back up in Ocean Audio. So now the gain has been set on all of those files. And so we can go ahead and clear those files out of there. Yeah, remove all files. And now we'll open Ocean Audio again. Let me go get it. And then we'll reload those files and you can see what it's actually done to the gain. So just to make this easier, make that smaller. 
and we'll put Paul Simon up top. Well, you can already see a difference now, can't you? Okay, so we have set the gain in these files to a point where if we played them back one after the other or switched between them, that the relative gain that we would hear would appear to be the same. So what we've done is we've set an average. Now, if you do this with an AUG file, it doesn't actually change the gain in the file at all. It just sets the replay gain in the tag. So you'd have to have a player that would be able to recognize that and then replay gain would have to be turned on. We did not re-encode the MP3s. We did not actually, you know, dump it out to like a wave and then re-encode the MP3 and lose quality. No, what MP3 gain does is it goes through each frame in the MP3 file and it sets this gain on the file itself. It does not change the quality of the audio and it is completely reversible because all you would need is a program that would go back and uh, reset those to 100%, which is what they're ordinarily set to. And a program to do that would be something like MP3 Direct Cut, which, as far as I know, is not available for Linux, but it will run in Wine. I don't even use it because I have no need to reverse this. So we didn't lose any quality in, the, in this. We just modified the file, and that's what makes MP3 Gain so unique is that, yes, you could open up an audio editor and you could set the gain wherever you want it to and then you could re-encode the file, but at that point, you've lost some quality because MP3s and AUGs and anything like that, that's lossy compression. So each time that you encode it, you lose something and it starts to sound worse and worse. So we have those set. That's how that works and that's what it does. So no matter what player I use, whether it be Rhythmbox or uh, the videos player here or VLC, those files will always have the same average loudness when they play back. And that's very nice when you're doing audio production as well. Like, uh, for instance, I do, I have a lot of sound effects on my computer. And all of the sound effects are pretty much set to the average level. So if I'm going to be creating some sort of audio production with them, uh, I have a predictable level to start out with. So there you go. All right, so how do you get this? Let's talk a little bit about the packages that you'll need. So let's bring it over here and open up the text editor here so we can talk about the packages. You will need to have uh, a file called Easy MP3 Cane GT dash GTK. There is also a version that is Easy MP3 Gain dash QT. So if you're running a GNOME based desktop like Unity, Cinnamon, something like that, you want the GTK version. If you want the QT version, if you're running like KDE, then there you go. And then you will also need the engines here that actually make the program work. One of them is called MP3 Gain. This is the one that's the problem child in 1604. Whereas Vorbis Gain, and eh, well, let's see, a, Vorbis Gain is in 1604. AAC gain is not because that is a proprietary format. So these are the three packages that you're going to need to be able to work with these files along with the front end. If you cannot get the front end in your distribution, you don't need it. You can actually look up how to do it from a command line because you can just feed a file into one end of MP3 gain and then it'll just go do it and it'll modify those files. I've never done it from the command line. I've always been fortunate enough to find the graphic front end, so, uh, but these are the ones that you actually need to get installed. And uh, the Easy MP3 Gain package is still in 1604, thank goodness. You just have to use a PPA here. Uh, Martin Wimpress, who is the head developer of Ubuntu Mate, was kind enough to create a PPA called Audio Stuff on Launchpad, and that's what's in here. It's just those packages. You get AAC gain and MP3 gain. So thank you very much, Martin. Wimpy is one of the coolest people in the Linux world, and I'm not surprised at all that he would be one to provide this. It's available in other PPAs as well. But I'll tell you what, you, you have to trust a PPA, and I trust Martin Wimpress 100%. Now, you don't have to install the PPA to get the package. You could just download the package file and then use uh, uh, something to you know install it directly because uh, I don't think this is going to get a whole lot of updates, and you might not want to hook a PPA up. So 
So if we look at package details, I'll show you how to download that. Uh, go to package details. You can do this with any PPA gang, anything. We got to go through and find our package. So we have one for Zesty. We got one for Yakety. Xenial is the one we want right here. So if we click on that, it's going to open up and show our package details. And then we need to find the right file, which in this case for us is going to be this deb file right here. And if we click on that, it should just download directly onto the system. It's a very tiny file, so it's probably already here. So let's, uh, I'll just look in the downloads folder and see if it's there. CD down. Yes, so there's our file right there, and then we could use GW to install it. It's already installed on the system because I hooked up the PPA, so I won't show you how to do that. So there you go, gang. Uh, that is MP3 Gain. That is what it does, and it is a very nice program to have hanging around. And like I said, at this point in time, I started actually encoding MP3s uh, when I was doing audio production work for radio stations back around probably 2000. <laughs> So at this point, between the music that I've collected over the years and the audio stuff that I have created myself, I've got about 30,000 MP3 files. So having this around is very important to me to make sure that everything is consistent. And it makes it real nice when I open up Rhythmbox here and pl want to play a playlist, right? Everything plays back at the same volume. It's very cool, and I don't have to use any... DSP, I don't have to set any replay gains. There's nothing to edit. Once you run it through that process, it's good to go. So there you go. Hope this video helps you out. Do check out Easy Linux on the web. Check out Easy Linux on Facebook. And check out Easy Linux uh, at freedompenguin.com where there are lots of articles about Linux from other contributors and myself. That page is run by Matt Hartley, and it's definitely something you want to put in your bookmarks. Thanks for watching, gang.